guys. What if, instead of getting past Paradox Pokemon that are ancient forms of a single Pokemon, we got entirely new Pokemon that were the ancestors for multiple Pokemon? So instead of a past Paradox form of Donphan, we got a Pokemon that Donphan, Copperaja, and Mamoswine descended from over thousands of years. Let's take a look at common ancestor Pokemon. Since I brought up an ancestor for our elephant and mammoth Pokemon, let's start here. Now I already really like Great Tusk, so I don't want to change too much about it. This ancestor is basically just a bigger Great Tusk with a mask and mouth fluff like Mamoswine. But let's go over how this Pokemon, Titanthos, would eventually evolve, in the divergent sense, into the three Pokemon we know of today. In the current day Johto region, Titanthos would need to evolve to thrive in more mountainous areas. It would develop the ground typing, with the tough hide of its trunk extending all the way along its back so it can roll like a tire safely on the rough terrain. The tusks shrink, ears extend straight out, and its body shape changes to focus on better mobility while rolling. The mask would no longer be needed, since the hide protects its eyes while in motion and its new environment would no longer require the additional fur around its mouth and feet. The Pokemon would also be found in the Sinnoh region, but changed to match the cold climate. The body becomes more round and compact to help better conserve heat. It would keep some of the fluffier elements to help it stay warm, losing the ears and additional details that would no longer be absolutely necessary in the coldest parts of Sinnoh. The mask around its eyes would develop to look more like ski goggles, and the tusks become pure ice. It develops some hog elements with its trunk changing to a pig nose, which it uses to find specific food found under the snow and more easily dig them up without damaging them. And finally we have Copperaja. We don't know exactly where Copperaja originated from, since they apparently aren't from either Galar or Paldea, but I'd like to think that it's from a region pretty far from Johto and Sinnoh. This would explain why it looks so different from Donphan and Mamoswine as their common ancestor might need to change more drastically for a different climate. Titanthos's body goes from being a rounded rectangular shape to being more obviously rectangular. The spikes on its trunk and top of head turn to claw-like and rock-like protrusions respectively. Some of the furry parts on the body change to markings, the fluff by the feet changing to Copperaja's orange markings, and fur looking like stripes on its back start to affect the skin and become the stripy orange swirls. Titanthos would need to become a steel typing and get a blocky body to help with construction and in mines, where it would need to be large enough to lift heavy materials, but also be able to get through more narrow passages. Over time, the skin becomes copper, giving Copperaja its unique dark green and orange colors as it developed its steel typing. Now let's move on to the common ancestor for all fox Pokemon. Kitsukoten. It was considered to be young and inexperienced, hence why it has Kitsune referenced in its name, but only has the single tail. It stored spiritual energy in the orbs floating around its neck and at the base of its tail. This Pokemon was considered wild and loved to cause mischief by shape-shifting into other Pokemon. As time went on, different elements of Kitsukoten would split off into its descendants. When it comes to nine tails, the Pokemon became more powerful. It gained additional tails to signify its power and age. The ghostly fire coming off of its legs and the power stored in its orbs changed to become a fire power for the Kanto version of Ninetales. Alolan Ninetales maintained the more wispy and wild hair, and its tails gained those elements as well. The energy Kitsukoden had became ice energy as Alolan Ninetales lived in the colder mountains of Alola. Kantonian Ninetales wasn't the only one that developed a fire typing, but Delphox as well. Besides gaining fire powers, this Pokemon also utilized Kitsukoten's spiritual energy to develop the psychic typing and moves. The wild fur on Kitsukoten's head and legs developed into the ear fluff and extra long fur on Delphox's arms and legs. Delphox also became bipedal as it developed a relationship with humans and became many trainers starter Pokemon. In a nearby region, Kitsukoten developed into Thievil in its line. It maintained the mask marking and puffed out tail. The fiery legs changed to dark sock markings on Thievil, and the red markings became the primary body color. The sneaky and mischievous nature of Kitsukoten was developed over time to help the Pokemon mark and stalk prey in Galar. And finally, how did Kitsukoten change into Zoroark and Zoroa? The ability to shapeshift definitely stayed intact over time, and Zoroa continues to be a mischievous little Pokemon. Kitsukoten became bipedal once again as more human interference occurred in its territory. For the original form of Zoroark that we were all first introduced to, 
The wild fur atop Kitsukoten's head grew out even longer, with the orb on its tail transferring over to the end of the hair. You can still see remnants of Kitsukoten's back leg flames on the hind legs of Zoroark. In ancient Hisui, Kitsukoten's influence is even more pronounced. The hair maintained its wild and ghostly look. The red orbs around the Pokemon's neck and base of the tail are now protruding red spots on Hisui and Zoroark's skin. By gaining the ghost type, this regional form was able to unlock some of its ancestors' spiritual energy. So while I was doing some research for this video, I had looked into the evolution of whales, dolphins, and sharks. Now I kind of assumed that these three animals were all pretty closely related, but it turns out that's not the case. Whales and dolphins are like cousins, but there's actually an animal that I never expected would be related to them more than sharks are. But we'll get to that later. Let's start off with the shark Pokemon Sharpedo and Garchomp. It turns out that rays are more closely related to these animals, so I think it'd be fun to see a Pokemon ancestor that also evolved into Mantine. This Pokemon would be called Feroxodon. Feroxodon has a body shape similar to a shark, with hammerhead eye protrusions, but the fins on either side of its body are long and wide like a ray. In the waters of Johto, Feroxodon evolved to be more friendly and approachable to other Pokemon. This was a necessary adaptation as the waters and bacteria in them harmed the Pokemon's health. This is how we got the current day Remoraid and Mantine symbiotic relationship. As the small fish Pokemon originally helped to remove the bacteria from Feroxodon's skin. In Alola, it also developed a friendship with humans that were interested in surfing in the water and returned for their protection and food. For these reasons, Mantine has only retained the long fins to glide, gills, tail, and markings. Meanwhile in Hoenn, Feroxodon changed to become even more aggressive. Its mouth grew larger and wider and teeth even stronger to crush anything in its path. Its long fins shrunk down and body became more condensed, with the hammerhead eye protrusion shrinking more into the body to improve its ability to speed through the water. As Sharpedo, it can now shoot out jets of water to go at extreme speeds for short bursts of time. This allowed it to become the number one predator in the seas. In Sinnoh, this Pokemon grew to become one of the greatest predators again, but this time on land. It slowly developed limbs to walk on its hind legs. Eventually, it harnessed more strength fighting in the mountains and caves, even developing the dragon typing. Many of its traits remained, including the general head shape, fins, and most of its tail. The fact that Feroxodon used to be able to glide with ease with its large fins also explains how Garchomp is also still able to glide itself. Now let's get back to that whale and dolphin common ancestor. This Pokemon is based on the extinct Basilosauridae. This Pokemon has sharp teeth, flippers that have some finger-looking sections, and a long body. It's overall a ferocious Pokemon. Eventually, this Pokemon would be able to become Whalemur and Whalord. It maintains the blue coloring, ridged belly, and finger-like fins. Of course, Whalord is also incredibly long, which it was able to inherit from Basilurge. It has definitely grown more friendly than its prehistoric ancestor. In Paldea, Basilurge would eventually split into two separate Pokemon. In the sea, it would become the dolphin Pokemon Palafin. The body would shorten, but curve into the typical dolphin shape we are all familiar with. The finger-like flippers were transformed into powerful hands to defend other Pokemon in the hero form. Its ferocity has been transformed into a great power and strength that the Pokemon would never have been able to obtain without changing and growing to aid other Pokemon. With some Basilurge starting to become stronger over time, others were forced out of the water when they were unable to aid or befriend other Pokemon. The finger-looking sections of the fins changed to legs for the Pokemon to walk. They eventually found themselves in the cold, snowy mountains, where it would eventually become Satitan. The body changed from long and serpentine to round and short. The blubber already found in its ancestor helped it to thrive in the cold. Basilurge's ferocity transferred to Satitan, who could now be a fierce Pokemon training in the mountains. Okay, so you know how I said there was an animal that was more closely related to whales and dolphins than sharks? Yeah, that animal was the hippo. So by that logic and based on our own science, it would make sense that there would be an ancestral form for our whale and dolphin Pokemon, as well as the Poudon. This ancient ancestor would be similar to Basilurge, but with some changes since it's the ancestor for both Basilurge and Hippowdon. I base this Pokemon in depictions of the Pachycetus. It still has a long body and sharp teeth with spot markings, but the finger protrusions on the fins are now webbed paws. Eocetus here is semi-aquatic, 
rather than fully aquatic like Basilurge. These webbed paws would eventually change into the spread out fingers of Hippowdon. Eocetus also has nostrils and a muzzle that are like smaller versions of Hippowdon's. The spots on his back would eventually become the ports on Hippowdon's back. Some Eocetus would remain semi-aquatic, but develop most of its powers on land. This is especially true for those that ventured into the deserts, where water was limited. This forced them to harness their strength to survive, becoming a ground type and harnessing the power of the desert and sand itself. This was the start of the evolution into Hippowdon. Which Pokemon ancestor was your favorite? What other Pokemon ancestors would you like to see? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!